Am I live? Is this thing working? I think that it's working. Guys, it is hobby palooza time. I'm excited. I can barely even talk. I just got done watching um, Hobby Hotline. Great show every Saturday. And I'm excited. Uh, thank you to BenchClear Media for including me um, in this year's Hobby Palooza. I hope that this is, continues to be an annual thing, kind of a tradition uh, that's carried on because I think that it's awesome, especially last year when we didn't have a, a national. And so this was kind of taking the place and, and helping to take the place. Now this year, we're lucky we're at kind of a this is a precursor to the big event. Uh, so it's it's exciting times, guys. It is exciting times. I hope you can hear me OK. I can hear myself, but I know that doesn't mean much to you all. So if you could just give me an OK in the chat that you can hear me all right, I would appreciate it. Let's go ahead and say hello to some people. And so how I'm going to do this, guys, kind of different. I usually don't do solo lives. So I normally do lives with other people. And I'm just going to do this one solo. I brought a bunch of PC cards to share with you guys. Just thought we would kind of talk through cards. And then also just talk to, talk to you guys in the chat. So whatever you guys want to talk about, we'll let the chat kind of drive it. And we'll do it like that. If you are new to my channel, this is the first time you've been here. I was a... 80s, 90s collector. I was a junk wax era collector back in the day. I cut my teeth. I think that was my first foray into business was when I was 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, uh, dealing with dealers that were that were 40, about my age, and, and probably getting ripped off quite a bit on singles, frankly, back in those days. But um, 25 years later, I am now back into it. I got back in beginning of 2018 and really just started buying a lot of the stuff as a kid that I could never afford. And then noticed that cards were, are now being graded and there's all sorts of different things going on. So I was like, okay, you know, this is, this looks pretty interesting. So I got back in 2018 and I, I've been in ever since and had, don't have any plans of leaving. So um, we'll go through some cards, but first let me say hello. Let me just go down the list. First, I think Brian might be the, the biggest Suns fan. Are you the Suns in four guy, Brian? Cause every single day, Brian comments about the Suns. So I think that he's pretty pumped about that 2-0 start. Do you think they're going to be able to carry it over in Milwaukee or you think Milwaukee's going to bring some heat and, and tie up that series? Let me know. Ziggy, what's up, man? Io Rhino, how you doing? Michael Ham, good to see you, buddy. Hope all is well down there in Tampa. I think I told you this, but my parents live in, in Land Lakes, just north of you down there. It's where I, I finished high school down there. Troy, what's up, man? Good to see you. Okay, thank you for that. Next end blog. I appreciate it. Just want to make sure you guys could hear me okay. All right, good deal. Audio is good. Audio is good. All right. Jeremy, what's up, man? Good to see you. I'm excited to see you in a couple of weeks in Chicago. Same with you, Yam Wax. Good to see you, buddy. Ryan, my main man. Ryan's gonna help me. So Ryan is a sports card history connoisseur. I think that's probably a good way to put it. But he is just a, an almanac for all sorts of just baseball cards going back um, and football, basketball as well, but really baseball cards. So he's going to help me at the national kind of sift through because I want to buy some I, I do want to buy some uh, graded baseball cards. But I would also like to take a shot at some raw if there's some that are available that we are where pr the price point is right. So Ryan's going to actually help me at the national. We're going to like, walk through because he's got a good eye for that stuff. And, and I do not. So. Uh, it'll be fun to see see Ryan and a bunch of you all down there at the National. Grandson goes to Land O'Lakes High School. Yeah, that's where I went. Class of 99. And the, back then it was just orange groves. There was really like nothing there. And now it's like mini Tampa, the burbs of everyone's moved out to the burbs. Hey, Timo, good to see you. Thank you. And then be nice. OK, well, you know, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Farm League Sports Cards. All right. So let's go. I'm just going to kind of go ahead and roll through some cards, but feel free. If you have topics that you want to throw into the chat, holler at me and we'll talk about it. I'm just kind of like showing off some things, but then this is wide open, wide open hour. All right. Let's actually start with some of the baseball stuff. And this is one where I do have some raw baseball, but this is fam. So this was family stuff that was recently found. And it was my in-laws, my mother-in-law actually found it in Ohio. And it was literally like, a box full of, of old baseball cards with rubber bands, like, like divvied up by team, all with rubber bands on them. So, but I went through all of it. It was a cool 69 tops, Nolan Ryan, um, a lot of 71 tops. So I had pulled these out. 
Uh, just kind of the, the bigger names, you know, there, there was Hank Aaron, there was a few Roberto Clemente's that were in there. Um, let's see. Yeah. Lou Brock, Bob Gibson. Might've heard of this guy. Oop, if I can get the glare, right. Nolan Ryan. Pete Rose. So all really the big, a lot of the, the big names, 71 tops were, were in, were in this box. So it was pretty cool to find. And so actually one of the cards that I'm targeting, I made a video on it, but one of the cards that I'm targeting in Chicago at the national is a 55 Bowman Willie Mays in a lower grade, probably like a, uh, a three or a four maybe, but that's the set that's, you know, I'm learning about it, but um, that's the set that's got like the, the old TV, like it's an old TV with like a wood border. I just, I love the look of those. So I'm, I'm going to be, I'm on the hunt. We, we will see, you know, when, when I was in Dallas a couple months ago at that show, I was surprised because that is a larger show, but there was not a lot of vintage there, not a lot of vintage, really anything. I mean, there was some, there was some really nice mantles, you know, there was some tables, but I mean that show, and I heard them talking about, uh, about this on hobby hotline earlier, about, you know, how much vintage versus modern. There was a boatload of modern in Dallas. I mean, it was like, I I, th I felt like it was more like 80, 20, like 80 modern, 20 vintage. And I, I could have missed some here and there, but it was a lot of modern stuff for sure. All right. So that's some of the, just kind of the baseball stuff. I want to get some of the stuff graded down the line, but it's just PC, you know, I'm going to wait for kind of the grading companies to have more bandwidth to be able to grade. I'm not going to necessarily do it now. Um, we'll go move over to some some of the older basketball stuff. I didn't pull out everything, but just kind of some unique items. 71 tops, Pete Maravich. And I do have, do I have his rookie over here? Where did I put it? Yeah, hold on. Let's see. So his rookie is 70. So that's a sec that was a second year Maravich. And there, there's the, the rookie Maravich in a six. This was one of the cards that, that I got getting back in about two and a half years ago or so. Just the tall boy cards. And that was back when they were actually very affordable um, in that grade, in that like six, seven grade. Uh, appreciate that, Megan. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks, Rick. It's good to see you, man. All right, let's see what else we've got. I need to do this better. All right, 81 tops Kareem. Actually, not vintage, but these were a couple of my recent pickups, just with it being kind of prices have come down a little bit, is a couple of Tatum Optic Hollows. They're both they're both hollows. One is a PSA 10. The other one is a BGS 9.5. It's got good subgrades, 10 centering, and then there's three 9.5s on the others. So pick those up. So when I, and also when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was a, I was really football cards first. I'm a diehard New Orleans Saints fan, so it was it was all football cards for me, really. And it was really and, and if you're if you're my age or older, you remember '89 Pro Set football or some of those some of those older you know '89 Upper Deck uh, baseball '89 Pro Set. That stuff was everywhere. I mean, it was all over the place. And um, so you know, I I picked up like I've got like that '89 Pro Set Barry Sanders and a PSA 10. That's the type of stuff that I had picked up because. As a, as a kid, it was like I was buying packs every weekend for a dollar trying to find those cards. So like for Barry, let me see if I can do this right. One thing I got in a couple months ago, got into exquisite football because there's a lot of talk about exquisite basketball cards, you know, with LeBron cards, et cetera. So this is the first year of exquisite football. Uh, Barry Sanders numbered out of 35, I think this one is. Is it on the front? It's on the front. Yeah, it's numbered out of 35 auto and it was less than $200. I thought that was kind of a just a cool card. And, and they don't football cards, especially in these types of sets compared to basketball, don't necessarily break the bank like some of the other uh, basketball stuff. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate that. All the way from the UK, Boomer 89. I went to kindergarten in the UK. My mom's British and my dad was in the Air Force. So I was born in Rammstein in, in Germany. And then we lived for five years in England. I went to kindergarten in England and then we moved to Panama City, Florida. And that's where I got started in carts. <laughs> they didn't have any cards back there. At least I don't remember them having cards in, in England. All right. This is one of my all time favorites being a Saints fan. Let's see if I can do this properly. So this is a quad auto. It's exquisite. I think this one is 2007. It's not that first year. 
but it's it's numbered number nine out of ten, which Breeze is number nine. So you've got Breeze and you've got Colston. And then on the back, let's see if I can get this right. It's Robert Meacham and Michael Pittman or Antonio Pittman was one of our backup running backs when he was there, I think, when we won the Super Bowl or, he, or right before. But it's kind of a cool like quad patch, quad auto, you know, type card um, of some of my all time favorite Saints with Breeze and Marcus Colston. Barry, top three running back along with Brown and Payton. I, I agree. And. Sadly, I missed, obviously I missed Jim Brown's career, but Walter Payton was right on the back end of when I was watching football. So I didn't really see sweetness play. I didn't, I didn't get to see him all. I saw a lot of Barry and a lot of Emmett. So I'm partial, you know, to those guys, uh, Barry Sanders. And even still today with all of the scat backs and all the flashy running backs, I mean, there's just not a guy that I've seen in the last 30 years that is quite like Barry Sanders. He's, he's something, he's just something else to watch. He was incredible. Yeah, the 89 Pro set. So the, re well, so 89 score was expensive back then. I mean, I remember, and I don't know if that was a hobby only product back in 1989, um, but for like, they did not have that at the grocery store, at least not where I lived. I mean, you could get 89 Pro set at the grocery store, at the gas station, absolutely everywhere. But 89 score was expensive. Uh, those cards, and those, those were chase cards back then, the Thurman Thomas. Yeah, the Thurman Thomas, I've got that card. That, that was another one that I had pulled out. I, I'd gotten when I got back in because it was like this card was literally like 50 or $60 in 1990 raw. I mean, it was expensive back then. And I think I got this for $60, you know, what, like a year and a half ago in a PSA 10. You know, so that's where I was like, oh, man, this stuff, I've got to get this stuff. Um, I just, you know, an 89 score is my all time favorite set. I did buy a binder, just a complete set of the 89 score set. Again, when I got back into the hobby three years ago, I got the whole set for 50 bucks shipped to me. And that was just back when, you know, prices were, it was back before kind of the boom and everything of the, the 2020, 2019, 2020 boom. And, and those types of like raw sets were, were still like pretty affordable. Um, I also picked up like uh 88 Fleer basketball set. You know, I mean, it was like, um, Stuff that was really inexpensive for raw copies. Um, might not be able to see this, but 87 Tops Football. This has like the Randall Cunningham rookie in it. Um, so this is this is what it looks like. It's like, so that's the Elway. But like the Cunningham rookie, let me pull this out. Yeah, so there's a Cunningham and a Jim Kelly rookie that's in this 87 Tops set. So if you, again, like, and these are very affordable sets. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know if they still are, but they definitely were um, a couple of years ago. Um, so I and I picked up actually just a few weeks ago. I was down in Cocoa Beach at a card shop and I was able to pick up an 86 tops complete set of 86 tops. that was in pretty decent condition for one hundred dollars. I just got lucky. It was a binder. And I think it was one of these things where a guy had bought a collection, just had binders and binders of stuff. And he was asking 150. I, I, I offered him 100. And I mean, it's got the Jerry Rice rookie in it. It's got the Steve Young. It's got, you know, it's got the Reggie White in there. So there's there's definitely deals to be had on as long as you're okay with, you know, if you want a complete set, they're out there. Not graded for that price, but but yeah. Second year Rice. Yeah, Raider Nation. Remember, Jerry Rice was a Raider at one point. Yabo Collectibles. Good to see you, man. Yeah, 89 score was a premium product. I remember one of my buddies, one of the, and I was so jealous of him because my parents, they they were not interested. In, I mean, they they let me collect cards because it was I was a kid, that was my thing, but my parents weren't into it. Whereas I had a buddy that his dad was big into cards. And I remember in his closet, at the top of his closet, he had like sealed wax of 89 score that he was just keeping. He was just keeping that 89 score sealed wax. I don't know if he ever opened it or what, but um, it was really cool how he how he had it all stacked up like that. I broke all my junk sets, sent them to PSA, like a half million. Yeah, yeah, that's the and that is the thing. I mean, it's and that's why like the Thurman PSA ten. You know, it's not a it's not a very expensive card. I just don't know how easy it is to get a PSA ten for for this card. And I know they're they're easy to get raw. I mean, you can buy them raw. But how many are going to get tens? I think that's I, I agree. Um, just, just a lot of, you know, it's a lot of centering. It's a lot of centering when you go back uh, to, to those old sets. 
All right. Let me see. I, I feel like I missed some comments here. Joe Dexter. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. She blinded me with the refractors. Also, I should mention um, this channel is the one to watch after. So he's up next on the next hour. So I'll announce that at the end too, but definitely check out that channel. She blinded me with the refractors. Great channel. I'll keep on rolling guys. All right. Not a lot of people like the CSG case, but I just wanted this card. This is just a Bowman paper Brady rookie, but in a CSG case, it's a lot less expensive than a, a BGS or a PSA case. And I'll be honest, I don't know if like the grading is that much different. I know the PSA people probably jumped down my throat for saying it, but I think that it's still a good, it was a good looking card. Um, you know, I, I felt, um, so I felt like, you know, at a deep discount, just because people don't, don't really care for the case. I, I took it. I took it. All right. Let's see what else we have over here. I'll go through some of my 89 score stuff. I just got, and also I just got kind of like base stuff that I wanted to collect. So like 89 score had like the regular, you know, rice. And then there was also the all pro version. I've got a few of these, these Barry Sanders rookies in a PSA nine. I missed the boat on the 10. That was a card a couple years ago that I messed up on where it was literally like, the, the PSA 10 for this card was like $350, $400. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm my, my, I was, my price point was like 200, like 275. Like if it comes under 300, then I'll get it. And now the card has gone bonkers in a PSA 10. So it's very tricky to get now. I think under a thousand bucks. I haven't checked them lately, but they're uh, they're They've definitely gone up from a few years back. Same with old Troy Aikman. I've got, I've got a few of these in a nine again. Not a not an uncommon card. These were these were printed, even though that was a premium product back then. Still printed a lot of those. Still printed a lot of that eighty nine score. So not rare. The all time sack leader, Bruce Smith. I don't really have this right. How huh? I'm showcasing. So sorry, guys. This was a, kind of a funny story too. So my parents knew that I wanted eighty nine score uh, when, when when I was a kid, but then they saw the price tag of eighty nine score, and so for Christmas one year. I had this, the complete set of 89 score under the tree and I was freaking out. Okay. So I'm like 10 years old and it was the 89 score supplemental set, which does come with the Sterling Sharp and it comes with a cool uh, Bo Jackson, it comes with a cool Bo Jackson card. So, I mean, cool cards, but very different than getting the regular 89 score set. So I'm still holding that grudge against my parents. Mom and dad, if you're watching, I'm still upset about it. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Brady may be the goat, but I like Breeze and Favre more. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like likability. You know, a lot of a lot of people like Dan Marino. You know, a lot of people like Rogers. A lot of you know, it's like it. I feel like with that, it just depends on you know on on who you're rooting for and who you like and all that stuff. TB12 collection, yeah, my definitely a big Tom Brady fan. TB12 always has something to say about about the Brady stuff. Man, if it's just hard to not give Brady his props. I mean, for a long time, I was a hater on Brady not that he was doing any, you know, it's just like hating because he was always winning. And it was just like, can this guy ever lose? And then finally I just gave in. I'm just like, you know what? I don't think anyone's ever going to do this again. I know people are big on Mahomes. There's big Mahomes fans out there and I respect Mahomes like crazy, but just for it to all work out to, to, to where you have seven rings and still playing and everything else, it's just mind boggling. Absolutely mind-boggling. Roman Gabriel. Yeah, Brady is a GOAT, but I like Marino and Montana. Marino, man, that was the one that got away in 84. Wasn't he a rookie when they went to the Super Bowl in 84, 85? And then he, I don't think he ever went back. I think that was his one, his one Super Bowl trip. He has been holding back his personality in New England and Tampa. Yeah, it does seem like he's more loose for sure. He's he, he definitely. I mean, just the the parade after the Super Bowl win with him throwing the trophy. I don't think he ever did that under Bill Belichick in New England. I don't remember that anyway. Um, you know, I I don't. Yeah, well, yeah. There's a good reason why you're a Brady hater, Raider Nation, with the whole Tuck Rule game thing. I remember that. I was there for that. I remember that. I'm with you. I'm with you. I agree. I agree. And then you know you, you know. It's very, very difficult, obviously, for teams to go back to back as, you know, the the Bucks are trying to do. The last team to do it was the 2003-2004 New England Patriots. 
but they are stacked again. They are absolutely stacked. If they can stay healthy, I mean, I know Jam Jameis Winston and my Saints, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with, but uh, the Bucks look pretty solid again, Michael Ham. So I'm sure you're probably pretty happy. You've got the Lightning going back to back. Has it ever been a better time to be a uh, to be a Tampa Bay sports fan? It's insane. Mahomes is good, but too risky to buy at his prices. Yeah, yeah, he's just still very early in his career. He's been just the most impressive guy over the last, like the beginning of his career is insane. It's just can he maintain that over you know the, the next decade, the next fifteen years? Kenny the Snake Stabler. Yeah, I don't have a Kenny Stabler rookie. I do have some cool rookie, like some some more of the vintage stuff. I've got Staubach and I've got Bradshaw rookies um, and that stuff. So, oh, I actually even pulled out too. We were going over. Oh, here was another like, I, I'm a big Bo Jackson fan uh, from, from that era. Even though his, his, uh, his career was cut short. Um, so, but here's also, if you guys remember, if you're my age, you remember starting lineups. This is from 1988 or 89, but I picked this up because it's still in box, still cool. You know, it's like a big time nostalgia thing, those starting lineups. So I've, I've got some of those, some of those older ones. What's up, Tube Nachos? How's it going? Bo knows. That's right. Bo was on top of the world, on top of the world. Um, I mentioned it in another video, but Bo and Dion being able to go back, you know, play two sports is insanity. Uh, I think there was a documentary where it was just showing Deion Sanders going from like playing a game, jumping on a plane, going to, you know, play baseball. I mean, it was just like, I, I don't get it. I don't know how those guys did it. Starting lives are awesome. Yes. Yeah. I've even got a couple of uh, graded ones. Um, I've got them up here displayed, but yeah, like a 90, I've got like the first Brett Favre starting lineup and it's graded. Um, AF, is it AFA? AFA is the action figure authority, I think is their, is their main grading, uh, grading place. And I, I bought it already graded, uh, but I thought that was kind of a cool piece to have. Cause I remember as, as a kid, I used to have the, you know, all the quarterbacks, good times. Have you ever considered collecting bobbleheads? I haven't, but I think that they are cool. I do have a Breeze bobblehead, a Drew Breeze bobblehead, but I've never really considered looking into, are you talking about, you know, graded ones or more just kind of like, cause they're cool or, you know, like do they, I guess what I'm asking is, do they have value? Like, are they valuable? Are there, are there, um, you know, low population, you know, bobbleheads, or is it more just kind of a fun thing to collect? Uh, that would be my question about bobbleheads. Cause I just don't know enough about them. I'm sure there's probably like vintage bobbleheads that are, that are pretty awesome and pretty rare. I would think. A lot of HGA returns with excellent positive reviews. What's your opinion? I think it's kind of a mixed bag on HGA from what I've seen. And, and look, and, you know, total transparency. If you know me, you know, I'm not a, I don't buy raw cards and send them in for grading. I just either buy raw or I just buy already graded stuff. So I'm no, I'm not a grading expert by any stretch, but I have been paying attention to, you know, the, um, you know, how they're, you know, kind of how they're being taken. HGA seems to have, you know, people that, that really like their slabs as far as the look of the slab. And then of course, there's some people that are unhappy about how they cap, how many they take, and they can't ever get into the slot to be able to get their cards graded. And then I've also seen where they're labeling sometimes is a little bit like there's misprints and stuff. I don't know. And maybe that's probably just growing pains for a newer company. It, the interesting thing will be, will HGA become kind of a, a top tier company? Because the thing we've seen with grading companies is it just takes a long time to build name recognition and confidence, you know, among collectors. So I think that'll be the, the that's that's something I'm watching. You know, can they stay the course? Will they continue to grow? You know, and all that stuff. I agree, Mike. Yeah. And he was a killer in Tecmo Bowl. He was everything. I remember my friends and I would play and like one of us would choose the Raiders and the other would get upset about it. Like, you know, you can't be the Raiders. You're, you know, like you're not going to be the Raiders again or I'm going to be the Raiders. We would fight over that all the time playing that game. Bo 1987 classic green, a great card. Is that the Royals green? Is that the green Royals card? The Is that 87 Donruss? Because I actually I'm asking because I, I was looking at those on eBay not that long ago. Even though I'm not a big baseball card collector, I like Bo and like the Royals uh, uniform and stuff. I'd like to have probably a, probably like three or four of those, and they're pretty available. And I've and I've been close to pulling the trigger on some, but just haven't yet. Hasn't been as much of a priority because they're they are out there. All right. Speaking of the 90s, 
Oh man, the action pack cards. You talk about like, I remember these were like three or $4 a pack back in like what, 92, 93. I don't have it right next to me, but I've got like the Brett Favre rookie card, just a raw copy. And I do have the Emmett Smith and a PSA nine. I've got two copies of the, uh, the, the rated, it's the rookie, but it's like the action packed rookie set or rated set. Um, that that's a cool card. And that's another card. I remember from like 1991 being in like my local mall at the card shows where they used to set up all the booths. If you're again, if you're 40 or if you're 38 to 38 and up, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. At the mall, they would set up every three or four weeks, massive card shows, memorabilia shows. And the, that action picked that action packed Emmett Smith card, along with like the hoops, David Robinson rookie card, um, you know, those were like chase cards for sure back then. That was an expensive card back then. I, I hope they do bring back action packs. That that's something that I would buy for sure if they brought that back. Assuming it's not a thousand dollars for a hobby box, then then I'm not. Then I'm not. But Shelly, good to see you. Otani has been amazing to watch. That home run yesterday was a bomb. Can't wait for home run derby. Now, I really like this Otani story because again, I'm not a baseball guy, but. I feel like this story is really, really good for the sport. Great for baseball. Just having that excitement around this player that's kind of doing something that another player hasn't done since Babe Ruth, from what I've heard. So I, I, I think that that's great for the sport. And it's probably not a bad thing for the hobby either. You got to have some of these guys that are just kind of bigger than life, like a Bo Jackson or like what Otani is doing. You know, I, I think that's really, really good for baseball. Action packed are so cool. I have an Iserman. Oh, I didn't know that they had hockey action packed. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Nothing like here. Yeah, Bo coming out of Lagoon in a swimsuit. Yeah, Shelly. Um, let me go back here. <laughs> All right, I'm grabbing more cards. Elliot, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, let's see what else I've got got over here. Oh, again, if you were watching football, I know a lot of you are not Saints fans. That's fine. But if you watched football in the 80s, you remember Ricky Jackson. This was not an, uh, a difficult card. Well, a difficult card to find graded because there's not that many people that graded the 84 tops Ricky Jackson rookie card. But this is like the best defensive player that the Saints, maybe the Saints have ever had. Ricky Jackson was like from another planet. And the Dome Patrol back in the late 80s, early 90s with Sam Mills, rest in peace, Ricky Jackson, Von Johnson, and oh, who was the other who was the other guy? Pat Swilling. Those guys were ridiculous. Ridiculous. It was fun to actually watch. We were actually competitive with the 49ers. Back then, we were in, we were in the same division as the 49ers back in the 80s. That's that's the reason why we didn't get a ring in the 80s. Just kidding. We, we wouldn't have gotten a ring in the 80s anyway. But we used to play them so tough because, uh, because of our defense. We had Bobby Bear playing quarterback, and we had uh, the Dome Patrol holding it down on defense, and they were ridiculous. They were absolutely ridiculous. So I picked up that Ricky Jackson. I can see Leaf acquiring the action-packed IP. That would be really cool. Yeah, I mean, I hope that – um, some people I, I've heard, I know people like to make fun of pro set. I've seen, you know, kind of hobbyists saying like, you know, pro set is the worst, you know, and then I know, um, uh, Brian Gray, you know, he's bringing out Trevor Lawrence. He's got, you know, stuff coming out. He's got the pro set brand for me. That's a huge deal. Cause that, that Trevor Lawrence is a, it's an 89 pro set design. It's exactly how I remember it, you know? And so I, I love that stuff. I don't care if it's cheesy. I'm sure like the 25 year old collectors are like, we don't care about that. But it's that's not for them. That's for that's for people like us. For me, yeah, Ricky Jackson. I saw something with Jim Mora, the coach of the Saints, was talking. He he made some sort of comment like, if there was one guy on the planet that I, if I had to pick one guy that I was going to be in like a bar brawl with, if there was one guy that I needed by my side, it would be Ricky Jackson. He he named Ricky Jackson as the one guy on earth that he would want to have <laughs> next to him if he was ever in a bar brawl. Buffalo decided to go to, for, yeah, yeah, man, the Bills were so good back then too. They were so, so good, those Bills teams. It's it's just odd um, that they that it just didn't get done, you know, because they were so, so good. Yeah, exactly. Playoffs? Playoffs? <laughs> All right. Um, I think I already showed the bow. I'll go back to kind of the, 
a couple more scorecards, 89 score, Michael Irvin. I've got the Aikman. I've got the Irvins. Um, yeah, I've got kind of the main. You know what I don't have is a Derek Thomas. Rest in peace, Derek Thomas. That was another big chase card back then. 89 score, Derek Thomas rookie card. Um, like that was a card that people that people were really chasing after. Very cool card. And I don't I don't have one of those yet. Ricky Bobby would be your wingman. All right. <laughs> That's a great movie. John Riggins, that dude. Yeah. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to come up against John Riggins. That's for sure. That dude was an animal. The Tony Mandrich. I don't, I don't have any, is it, is it Don Mikowski or Don Majowski? I think it's Mikowski. That That's another guy. You had like Tony Mandrich and you had Don Mikowski. Don Mikowski was like the next Bart star. Like Don Mikowski, if I'm saying his last name, right. Was the, the second coming. And uh, just, you know, just didn't pan out, didn't pan out like a lot of these quarterbacks. Let that be a lesson to all of, you know, with all the uh, all the new quarterbacks coming out. I love them all just like you do. But there's a Don Mikowski in there, guys. There's a there's a couple Don Mikowskis. Chuck Norris. Yes, sir. Yeah. Kelly Smith. Kelly Smith. Hulk Hogan. Uh, if you're asking if I have Hulk Hogan cards, I don't have any Hulk Hogan cards. I did used to watch him wrestle, though. That was, you know, it was WWF before it was WWE. That's when I was watching wrestling, and it was Ultimate Warrior and Hulk and all those guys. Oh, yeah, the Tim Brown. I don't have the Tim Brown rookie card. I've, well, I have it in the set. I have it in my 89 score binder set. I don't have the, I don't have a graded copy, though. Yeah, Tim Brown's so underrated. Maybe it's because he wasn't a big personality, wasn't as outgoing as some of the other guys, but Tim Brown was was rock solid. All right, as a as a Drew Brees fan, this is one actually I got this off of another YouTuber uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Steve from Flipping Steve sold me this, and he did not give me a discount. So Steve, I'm not I'm not happy with you. Just kidding. Uh, but this is one of the only Brees rookie cards that I've got, um, and it was it's an auto. Obviously, it's just, you know, those upper deck on card auto cards. And for his stuff, because it's not like what we're not talking about, I don't know, like like a Tom Brady card, obviously, would be a zillion dollars for Breeze. You know, he's got collectors. He's one of the he's probably a top 15 quarterback of all time, I would say. But his stuff is still fairly reasonable. So I was able to get a, a, a good price from Steve on that one. Um, what else? Oh, here's one when when I first got in. First got back in, I should say, 2018, uh, the Joe Montana rookie card in an eight. And back then, this was $150, I think, in, in 2018, like middle of 2018, I think is when I got it. And I remember that was a lot of money. I was thinking like, man, that's I don't I didn't really want to spend $150 on, on a single card. I was like, man, that's a lot. But that is such a great card. You know, that was one that I just never had as a, as a kid. Couldn't afford it then. So I was like, I've got to get a copy. Got to get a copy. Okay, um, let's ship. So I'm, I know I'm talking cards here, but also for people in the chat, who is going to the national? Who's excited about the national? What's what's kind of your thoughts on it? What is your game plan at the national? It's my first national that I'm going to. My wife and I are going to go. I'm excited, really, mainly to meet a lot of the people that I've met through the channel that I haven't met yet. Um, and there's quite a few of you um, in the chat, hopefully that will be there, but also just content creators and and industry people that, that I've ne never met in person. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So I think that's kind of my number one would be networking community would be my number one uh, for being at the national. Of course, I, I want to see, honestly, I think it's like what they were talking about on hobby hotline with like the card museum. You know, it's, I want to see all the different, I know I'm going to walk in, there's going to be cards I've never seen before, probably cards, well, definitely cards I've never even heard of. And so just kind of the, the museum of cards is kind of probably number two. And then number three, I'm hoping to, to get a couple of nice pickups there if, if possible. We'll see. We'll see. Michael Ham, I plan on going book to flight, may sleep in a lobby. Oh man. I, yeah. I would offer you my, you know, a, a joint hotel room thing, but I'm with my wife. So I think she would probably like nix that and actually just, yeah, we should, we probably shouldn't. All right. Ziggy, very excited for the national. Can't wait for post-national hobby strength, regardless. Normal coming. Yeah. It does feel definitely like, um, you know, more of a, a stableness, you know, I don't even know if that's a word stableness. Well, it is now. Um, but yeah, I, I, do, I like that too. I'd like to have, you know, new products, not be a zillion dollars, um, you know, and then I do like some of the volatility. I think that's fun. But when it's going like, you know, like this, it's not, I, I don't know if that's a great thing. You know, I'd like it to be a little bit, a little bit more smooth. 
Hey, Maiko, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Okay, all right. Hey, I appreciate that. There's gonna be people that are that would argue that Breeze is an underrated guy because he's undersized, and the way that he was able to kind of have a, have the career he had without necessarily having the physical tools is is pretty cool. Uh, just being undersized, I would say earlier in his career he had a big arm, and honestly though. You know, a lot of people were saying last year, like, oh, his arm, his arm is terrible. He had a torn labrum. He had like 11, you know, he had like 11 broken ribs. He had a litany of injuries. And that it makes a lot of sense now while he was not why he was not able to get the ball down the field. It makes it makes more sense to me now. All right. <laughs> Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I've not been, you know, I've been to card shows. I'm in North Carolina and there are some good card shows around me. I've gone to some nice local shows that have been good, but even just going to Dallas, Dallas was so much uh, bigger than my local uh, regional shows. And then the national is going to be just that much bigger. So I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm really, really excited about it. All right. Vintage baseball card packs going to be there. Looking forward to meeting a lot of new people. Went way back in 93, just got back in the hobby nine months ago. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of what's cool about um, this particular community. There's a lot of like minded people in the same boat. You know, there's a lot of people when I say, oh, yeah, I used to collect in 1989 and I just got back three years ago. There's a lot of people that are in that same exact boat. And that's awesome because we have the same stories. <laughs> you know, we have the same experiences. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's cool. Hey, Michael. Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining. Yeah, he played with broken ribs. And and I mean, I don't know how he did that. Um, I don't know how he did that. All right. Let's see what else we've got. Where? Is, yeah. Yeah. Brad was not invited. You know, it's like, should I have a guest? Well, first off, Brad's still and we're talking about Brad, the comeback card investor. Brad's still sleeping. You know, Brad. No, he was not invited to this. I, I would, I'm not going to have him on my stream messing with our stream. This is our time. This is our time. <laughs> wow. 1990. That's cool. That is really, really cool. Mike, how has it changed since 1990? I'm sure from two years ago in 2019 to 1990, a vastly different, a different show. And actually on hobby hotline, they were talking about how there was like a softball game you know, back in 85 or something. Could you imagine if they tried to do some sort of a softball game now? <laughs> there would probably be more people attending the softball game than there are, you know, going to um, Tampa Bay Bucks games from two years ago. Oh, Michael Ham, zing, got you. And actually, I used to, I lived in Sarasota for, for a while before moving to North Carolina. And we used to always go to the Bucks games and there was nobody in the stands. It was kind of a, a dark period uh, for, for the Bucks when, when I was there to watch those games. So it was, it was a lot of saints fans, not a lot of bucks fans, but now of course you've got the big, you got the big guy down there uh, in, in Tampa. And so now you're uh, you're, you're riding high. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. I can't, I mean, <laughs> it's definitely changed in that way for sure. Yeah. We'll see. You know, it's like a Monte Teo type situation. Like, we, is there a girl, you know, we don't know. We, we don't know. A YouTuber softball game. You know what would actually be better for me, though, if, the, if anyone decides to do that is a pickup basketball game. I am terrible at baseball slash softball. I never played as a kid. I could do flag football. I could do basketball. I could do bowling. I'm a bowler. I could bowl. I could maybe do tennis. But softball, I would probably embarrass you guys. Uh, any of the other YouTubers out there, don't don't invite me to the softball thing. I would I would not help out. I would or put me at like DH or something like someone like an alternate. Somebody gets injured and you have me come in. That would probably be the that'd be the way. That'd probably be the way to go. No, she's gonna be with me. Yeah, no, she's gonna be with me. And don't worry, she's not gonna be the camera woman. You know, she's not gonna be the uh, the camera person. Uh, she's going to come with me and, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll just be walking around. Uh, I'm not going to do, I, I know I did that, uh, in Dallas, I'm not going to do the camera thing. I will do, um, I will make content there, but it'll probably just be like in the lobby or, you know, it'll be in the hotel room or whatever. Um, I probably won't do as much show stuff, maybe off to the side show stuff, but nothing crazy though. I'm, I won't do like, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of content, probably just like stuff here and there, but yeah, she's going to come. She's not coming to go shopping. No, 
Yam, Yam, she's locked in. She's locked in to uh, to be ready to go for for cards, making sure I'm getting the right deals. Oh yeah, yeah, she knows what she's doing. All right. Uh, I have a few programs from the National and the cover art for for the 1984. Few dealers from then that will be at this one. Was 1984 the first National? 1984, 1985. Yeah, comeback card hinge table exactly. Yeah, Brad's gonna be running his his dating site or whatever his new his new dating app that he's that he started. Atlanta is next weekend, and I'm in ATL until later this month, deciding whether or not to go. Yeah, no, that would be cool. You should let yeah let me know, Michael, how that goes. Uh, that Atlanta show, I've heard I've heard some about that Atlanta show. It's only about a four hour drive from me, so I thought about doing it, but I think it's just too much, just too much with, with everything we've got going on here. So decided to not do the Atlanta show. Nineteen was that nineteen eighty was the first the first national. Yeah, live twenty four seven coverage. Yeah, that would be uh, like like the Truman Show, that movie, The Truman Show with Jim Carrey, where the camera just never goes off and he doesn't even know about it till the end of the movie. All right. Do I have any more cards here? Did I show all of the stuff that I brought? I've got more cards, obviously. I just put I put some things to the side. Let me see if I have anything else right around me to share. Shoot. I don't know if I have. Oh. Got a couple more. One of the more important cards, Archie Manning rookie, Saints, 1972 tops. Again, just have to have it. As a Saints fan, best quarterbacks in Saints franchise history, Drew Brees and this guy, Archie Manning. Hey, if it wasn't for this guy, Tom Brady would have 11 rings. I saw Peyton Manning said that. <laughs> if it wasn't for this guy, Peyton Manning would have, or not, or uh, Tom Brady would have 11 rings. I saw uh, Peyton Manning said something about that. Like there was a quote uh, from uh, uh, Manning. That I thought that was really funny. Do you guys think smokers were like trading T206 cards back in the day? Yeah. Were those cards, were those cards really rare or was it more that like, and I know the Honus Wagner was rare because he didn't like smoking. And so he just, they, they kind of just, they destroyed a lot of them. But I guess what I'm wondering is, did they print a lot of it? And then it just over time, because they're so old, they've just gotten lost in history. Ryan, maybe you know, maybe you know some of this, or was it kind of more of a limited print compared to like how we print today? I don't know if anyone knows that. Be interesting though. Oh, they were in every cigarette pack. So that's a lot, but you know, population was a lot lower back then too. I don't know. Do you guys know anything about T206 as far as that goes? Oh yeah. I'm with you. I've seen that kid. What is he like a sophomore in high school or, or a senior in high school or something throwing lasers already? Yeah. I hope the saints trade everything. Do like a Mike Ditka, you know, to get Ricky Williams type draft where we trade absolutely every pick to get Ricky Williams. Like we did like for, for that Manning, that, that up and coming Manning. Yes. I agree with that. Absolutely. Only in American tobacco company packs. Okay. Interesting. Was that like one specific, spe I can't talk, specific brand? Meaning like, was that like just in like Lucky Strike, you know, packs? Or was that across, like, like was it like all the Marlboro products type thing? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, not everybody was actually buying packs. They were doing, they were doing it themselves. That's a, that's it actually, that's a good point. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. All right. So who else? I didn't see anyone else say that they're going to, that they are going to the national. Is anybody else going to be at the national? Please let me know. Cause if there's people that I, I, I want to keep an eye out of the 150,000 people that are there, maybe I'll bump into you. <laughs> More people in Germany still roll for the same reason. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's probably outside of the U.S. It's probably fairly common that people would do it to, to save money, especially now. What is it like six dollars a pack or something crazy? It's nuts. 
Oh yeah. Where are, are you in England, Brett, or is this still on, still on lockdown? I thought they were opening things up a little bit. Um, or are you in Australia? Nice. All right. Me too. My first one as well. I don't know. I've contemplated this Ziggy just kind of going, I've never tried that. I was thinking about trying it with my phone to see like if it works, you know, like if it works properly to be able to do a live um, from there. Cause I've never, maybe, I'll, you know what, maybe I'll, well, no, cause it'll go straight to YouTube. So I'll probably, I might try it. That actually might be a good spot to try it. Cause even if it's something like me, just like my forehead, you know, for 30 seconds on YouTube, at least I know whether it works or not. I don't know, but I might try something like that. I might try it out. Uh, oh yeah, I'll reach out to you. I'll reach out to you, Yam. Uh, whether it be on social media or whatever, I'll, I'll reach out to you for sure. I get in, um, we fly out Thursday at like 6 a.m. And then we get there at like noon, noon time. And then we fly out Sunday morning. So really like Thursday afternoon, Friday, Saturday will be full days. And then I don't know what I'm doing at night. I know that I'll get, I'll get together with some of the other content creators at some point. Um, but I don't, I, I don't have locked in plans uh, quite yet. We, we haven't figured all that stuff out yet, but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely catch up for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Italy will win on Sunday. It's a house divided. My mom's British. So um, it's funny. My, um, my, my wife, if, if, if you're new here, uh, my wife is from Florence, Italy. Originally, she grew up there. So she is Italian, Italian. She is Italian. So she is obviously pulling for the Italians. Um, and, and my sister-in-law, also Italian, she's here. And um, her fiance is English. So it's going to be like, it's going to be like me and uh, her fiance and then my sister-in-law and my, uh, and my wife kind of on, it's going to be like on each side. We joke because Brits are so passive aggressive and Italians are so direct. So we're going to, you know, depending on how the game goes, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a little weird. I'll be honest, but England hasn't won. England hasn't been to a, a Euro or a world cup final since the sixties. So if you don't care, just pull for England, just pull for England. Either way, I'm fine because I'm not that as big of a soccer fan to where if England loses, it doesn't ruin my life. Like if the saints lost the super bowl, I would be in my room, like, under the bed for like two weeks. Just kidding. Well, probably not actually. It's probably pretty true. Um, but you know, with, uh, with Italy, it's a big, you know, it's a big deal for them. So, I mean, if, if they win, if Italy wins, it's fine. If England wins, it's great. You know, so either way we're good. Yep. Family feud. Exactly. Yeah. She'll be yelling at me. She'll be cussing at me in Italian for, for 90 minutes, essentially what that boils down to. <laughs> Yeah, England does. England's very talented. The one thing I, that I'm going to be watching closely for this match is the defenses are are elite on both teams. England's got great D. Italy's got great D. They both have great goalkeepers. And, you know, the one thing that I think gives England a little bit of an edge is in that last game, um, the not, not the uh, Italy-Denmark game, but the previous game, game one of the italian strikers on the outside tore his achilles i don't i don't remember his name but that guy was lights out he was he was one of their best players and he's out he's out for the tournament that might be the difference because now italy's got guys that can come in and, and play but yeah exactly you got you know you've got harry kane you've got um oh who's the other guy who's who's the striker on the other side for england i'm drawing a blank um he's so good he's so shifty he's the guy that um is it radford Ah, I can't think of the guy's name. It's um, he was the one that got the penalty again, he, the penalty against him for us to win essentially. Um, oh well, but anyway, England's got got good strikers, very good strikers. Spider tack, yeah, Sterling, Sterling, yeah, Sterling has got he's 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 really really good. It's funny, Harry Harry Kane is such like, I feel like he's like me out there. You know, like he's like kind of just like rumbling, tumbling, stumbling, you know, like, but he just finds ways to score. The guy just scores goals. So I don't know. Yeah. Raheem Sterling is the guy. Yeah. Rashford's another English player, but Raheem Sterling was the one I was thinking about. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. I'm looking forward to that, that, that a uh, Euro final will be a good game to watch. Yes. Yeah, so card vault. Um, I am specifically looking uh, for, 
50s baseball cards, a couple of nice ones. So I'm not going in with a laundry list of stuff that I'm looking for. I don't own a graded vintage baseball card yet. I do have, um, I showed them earlier. I've got some raw stuff, you know, like I've got some like raw, uh, some of the older stuff that's, that's family that, that are family cards, but I would really like to add a nice, um, either Willie Mays mantle, um, or what was the, Oh, I had a third player there that I was looking at Mays mantle and I'm drawing a blank on the third, but really it's, it's really between Mays and mantle. Honestly, there's a 55 Bowman Willie Mays that, that I really would like. And then there's a 56. <laughs> yeah. That does he not kind of, I mean, we kind of have the same hair and I mean a little bit, right. I, I mean, I'm half English. I'm 50% English. My mom's British. So I'm like the, I'm like the Harry Kane out there. Just kind of like, and I'm not saying he's not athletic. The guy is obviously athletic, but he's not as, you know, he's not as fast. He's not as, you know, he just uses his body right to kind of position himself. Well, yeah. So anyway, 55 uh, Bowman, Willie Mays, 56 tops. Uh, oh, Jackie Robinson was a third player. So I'm looking at a nice Jackie Robinson, a nice Willie Mays, nice mantle, but that 56 tops mantle is one that, that I really like too. Uh, but honestly, I really like a lot of the tops 50s cards, whether you're talking about like 54, 55, you know, 56, like I, I like all those. So, and I don't own any graded ones. I'm looking for like a lower grade, maybe like a three or a four that looks nice. Um, fortunately, a lot of my hobby friends will be at this show that really know vintage baseball very well. So if I have a question about a card, if I'm thinking about getting something, I have people at my disposal there that can help kind of guide me through that. So as far as who might like, what am I targeting? That will be that. That's what I'm really targeting. Now, look, if there's something out of the ordinary, that's like, wow, I really want to get this. I want to keep it open, but I'm, I'm going to try to stay really narrowly focused. I'm going to try to stay focused. Exactly. Yeah. The 55 Bowman, the TV, exactly. The wood border TV card. That's, that's what I'm looking for um, is one of those. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see slowly going into more vintage myself. Um, it's the history too behind these. And I know this is, we're talking sports cards. I do the same thing with, with comic books. I've got like some of those early Marvel books from the sixties. Cause it's like, man, it's, it's, uh, it's that history there. It's like some people will say like, Oh, well, people only collect like players that they watched or players that, you know, they're, they're only going to be interested in players that they watch. And, and while I do think that's true to some degree, I think that there's also kind of a nostalgic kind of a history component. You're, you're, you're holding a piece of history in your hand with some of this stuff, whether you're talking about vintage cards or comics or coins or whatever that thing is that you're into. And that's what, that's what draws me to that stuff. So yeah, I didn't see Mickey Mantle play, but I understand the importance and I respect the history of those cards. Yeah, Mike, can you make, maybe we can do this together. Like you can learn, maybe I can teach you a couple of things. <laughs> No, Mike will be one of those guys that I hope to run into there at the National. I'll be reaching out um, that can hopefully help me with, with some of these uh, some of these buys for sure. I'll be reaching out. All right, guys. I also want to make sure I'm watching the time because we're on a Hobby Palooza is on a tight schedule. Uh, it's, it's off at, at one hour and we've got She Blinded Me with Refractors is next up. Um, so definitely go to that channel in about six minutes. We have a little bit more time left. Um, so yeah, if you have any, any other comments or anything you want to throw in here in the last five minutes, please do so. Yeah, I know Mike is all about that ultra modern stuff. I'm trying to talk to him about vintage and he's just like, ah, you know, uh, I, I need this new stuff. <laughs> modern for the cash vintage for the love. Yeah. And even, you know, vintage is, is, um, I mean, I've heard people say like, oh, it just kind of like slowly accumulates. And, but I, you know, honestly, like there's some vintage that has gone way up as well, just as the other modern stuff has. So, you know, it's, it's, yes, it is more steady and it's not, you know, there's not like the impact of a game impacts a price of a card or whatever, but, um, but vintage has got its own kind of market. That's it, while it's, while it is stable, it does, there's, there's pops in there too. So there's some, there's some fun volatility in there as well. All right. Yeah, some of the best designs. And it goes across not just baseball, but also football cards uh, are, are awesome uh, as well. Uh, some of those you know, those early football cards. I love vintage football. Um, if I just had infinite wealth, you know, independently wealthy, I would be digging in hard on, on vintage football cards. I love vintage football. Uh, so, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you, Michael. Actually, for you, Michael Ham, 
This I don't know if this would be considered vintage. It's 79, but Doug Williams, the first African American QB to win a Super Bowl. Um, he has a great story too. If there's a, a 30 for 30 on Doug Williams or like a, a football life, watch it. He's now like a uh, consultant for the Washington football team now. But man, Doug Williams' story is a really, really cool one. Just like, you know, came from nothing, had to work his tail off, had all sorts of uh, stuff to, you know, uh, go through to get to where he was. And then the fact that he won the Super Bowl, I think he threw four TDs in the Super Bowl uh, to win it uh, for, for Washington. Very, very cool story. So I've got, I've actually got a couple of these. Um, there's not a lot. Of, I think there's only about a thousand graded copies of this, maybe 1200. So there's not, and look, Part of that's because of the demand. Like, not everybody is out grading Doug Williams cards. Um, but, you know, I think that just the fact that he's going to be historically relevant just for everything that he did is uh, it's a cool card. Um, very, very cool card. I have an autographed one I got in person. Awesome guy. Are you talking about Doug Williams or a different card? Yeah. If you met Doug Williams, that's really, really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't crop dust the convention center, guys. Let's let's keep it let's keep it a little bit, you know, a little bit classy, just a tinch classy. Can we do that? No, I think it's going to be mind-boggling how many I'm trying to uh, vision like how big the convention center is and then how many people are going to be there. It might be it might be a wild time. I don't know. We'll see. I I'm picturing it being like in the mosh pit at a concert. Is it going to be like that? You know where I'm at like the Green Day concert and I'm or the Metallica concert, you know, getting thrown around. I hope not. I hope it's not that crazy. I hope it's not that crazy. Yeah, stay away from Brad at the, at the show. Stay away from Brad. The guy eats nothing but Chipotle. That that just tells the story right there. Keeps the flippers and show ponies away. Yeah, they're not they're not flipping cards really. I mean, not. Not not the same way that the modern stuff is. I would agree with that. Vintages for lovers needs to be a t-shirt, right? Megan Davies, yeah, absolutely. I don't know what you look like, but if you see me, absolutely reach out, please. Sons, Sans and Four. He's so excited he can't even spell Sons. Brian, are you are you the Sons and Four guy? You are the Sons and Four guy. I'm pretty much convinced of that. I am convinced of it. But in all seriousness, for Phoenix Suns fans, good good for you guys because it's, I mean, it's a fun young team. You know, there's not a lot of parity in the NBA with the superstars kind of winning it every year. So so good for you guys for uh, for making a push through and making it. I mean, it's cool because it's redemption for the Suns as well. Um, you know, you think about last year where they won, what, eight games in a row and then didn't make it into the, the bubble. And then they have a chance to win it all this year. Like, that's a pretty cool story. That's a cool story. All right, tube nachos. No, man. Come on, Saints. Saints. <laughs> it was good seeing you. Thanks. And thanks for, for joining tube nachos. I'm going to sign off here in about a minute. Let's see what else. Do you pick Do you pick up any flawless breeze? I haven't yet. But um, Armin, that is definitely kind of a, a long-term collecting plan for me is to have more breeze. I've just been prioritizing other things and just kind of waiting for him to, um, I think pricing will kind of subside a little bit. Um, you know, down the line a little bit as kind of like other, you know, he's, he's been retired for a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to wait a little, maybe wait a year and then kind of see where a lot of his like nice, like the flawless stuff, some of the autos and stuff like that. So what's funny is, is cricket. I, I think that I Googled it and cricket is like the most popular global sport, you know, but, and I looked on eBay and there's like cricket stickers, you know, so I was joking, like maybe that's like the next big thing or cricket cricket cards or stickers. I don't know any of the players. I don't own any of the cards or any of that, but it's kind of interesting though, that you have all, you know, so many people are into cricket, but it doesn't like, there's no card market for it that I know of anyway, at least not in the U S that I'm aware of. So, Hey, th thanks, Michael. I don't really do like individual live streams. So this was, I was just kind of, you know, flying by the seat of my pants. I appreciate you guys coming into the, into the chat. Cause if there's, if there was nobody in the chat, it would have been super awkward. I would have just been kind of talking to myself for a while. So thank you very much. Guys, I'm going to jump off. Um, we've got to get on over to She Blinded Me With Refractors is next up in the lineup. Thanks. Thanks, Reese. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate that, man. And I will talk to you guys again later. Have a great weekend.